So one of the more popular articles on the Finkstep blog uh, by Emily is The Math of Becoming a Millionaire in 13 Years. She has also written uh, another blog post on becoming a millionaire in 48 months with a tiny one person startup, no VCs. Uh, so she is uh, kind of experienced. You can, uh, I will link to the articles, you can read them um, uh, uh, if, you, if, if you want separately. Um, yeah, she was talking about having, like in, in this article, about a tiny startup of building a business that is mostly valued, um, uh, that, is, that is valued at, let me check, 730,000. And then together with some investments that can be used, uh, that can be um, um, saved up as you build the business from the cash flows of the positive cash flow business um it would add up to a million in like four years right but now let's go into some more uh, conservative millionaire math uh she she pointed out and they, and she divided it up into six types of uh investors and uh, maybe you can look, get something out of it so the, mo the most important takeaway is uh, that in order to be on the right side of change, we need to build up assets uh, and we cannot rely on our human labor because labor is getting disrupted as we speak by AI. So we need to, uh, we need to channel more and more aggressively into our investments to be on the right side of change. Okay, so let's get started. The first, uh, the first path to, uh, is the basic strategy. This is kind of uh, the run of the mill strategy that you would get uh, at any other YouTube channel as well. It is um, basically you work as an employee, maybe a government employee, right? Because governments will um, continue to spend a lot of money uh, on administrative administration. So this is like one of the remaining in safe industries, I, I would say, in our world, even with extreme disruptions uh, in the in the labor market. I think government employees are most safe because government is innovation resistant <laughs> so they would not disrupt their own employees they would not uh, basically like government i think government spending will, ju will just creep up and they won't often use ai tools even if it is, even if ai tools would be possible to replace a million government employees they wouldn't do it they would just use the million government employees and pay them okay so you work as an employee make a, like a, the median us household income of 63 you simply save 10% uh, of your paycheck every month. You put it into a low-cost index fund, uh, right, roughly 6,300 per year. You assume you get an inflation-adjusted return of 7%. So this is kind of uh, the, the nominal return of, say, 10 11% or so, and minus 4% inflation because you have inflation. And uh, yeah, so let you they get the historical average return of the S&P 500, 7%. So you do this math, you see like over the years, you start with uh, year zero, net assets of zero, you contribute 6,300, you have not had any investment return, then you build your contributions every year, the contributions stay the same. You don't assume your income goes up, right? Because I mean, this is kind of a defensive way of calculating it. Um, you could also think of, uh, working a bit less every year because uh, because you would have inflation actually increasing your income also because uh, you would get some inflation compensation. Okay, but here we uh, we assume you just con contribute six thousand three hundred every single year, and then over time you see in the year eleven you would also make you would already make more than you uh, buy from investment return than you would contribute um, due to your income like 10% of your paycheck. And then in year 35 or 36, you would actually make more with investments than you would make with your with your paycheck uh, with your paycheck. So you could even like skip maybe your contributions at this point and start withdrawing some of the money. And after year 37 you could comfortably live off your investment income. So that's why the million is kind of a good target for many people because it would allow you to uh, to live off your investment, assuming like a 7% uh, investment growth rate uh, with the S&P 500. So there are a lot of take, take a lot of like caveats here. Uh, 37 years of, of uh, investment is a long period of time. If you are 30, then you would be 67. Uh, if you are 67, chances are you are already dead. I mean, this is kind of the very slow strategy. And there are so many ways of accelerating this journey. 
and we will look at these ways uh, in a minute. So this is kind of a, nothing here is investment advice, this is just like math, right? This is just math with some assumptions. The assumptions can be wrong or can be right, who knows? This is just, I mean, we are just putting in numbers in a spreadsheet here. Um, but I think there are strategies, so I think Emily has found a, go uh, a good couple of uh, types or different, um, different personas, you could say, um, and, and uh, how, how those personas can generate significant wealth uh, with, a, with a good strategy over time. Okay, the next one is a, like not being not so lazy strategy. Here the assumptions are um, you st still start with zero net assets, but you, your income kind of grows over time with a, uh, in a, on a 3% basis, right? So here you have the, um, let's scroll down. So you have a, your income grows by 3% per year, so you, you, you become a mature asset. This could even be like just, just staying relevant, just getting the infl inflation compensation every single year. Um, but okay, so th let's say you, you, you modestly grow your value to the marketplace, so your income grows by 3% per year, which is like pretty easy to do, I would say. And you start invest 10% of your paycheck. But this could be even more, this could be, uh, harder to do if you are outside a, a safe industry or outside of a safe job because many jobs actually are getting disrupted these days and I think many people will lose a job due to AI. Okay, but this is like traditionally this would be a modest goal, right? Growing your income by 3% every single year um, and uh, you start invest 10% of your paycheck but then you grow your savings rate by 1% every year. So um, basically you grow your savings less than you grow your salary. So you could still, you could still the, your savings rate is 10% initially, but then you grow it by 1% every single year. So as your income grows, you grow your contributions as well, but you grow your contributions less quickly than you grow your income. So you would still be able to spend more over time uh, um, and, and expand your lifestyle. So, so initially you start with zero asset, you have an income of, uh, of like 63,000, the savings rate of 10,000, so you contribute 6,300 6, um, and initially you, you have no return. But then in the next year, your savings rate is higher, your income is higher. So both, like th these are multiplicative effect, right? So you have 3% higher income, but you also increased your savings rate from 10 to 11%. So you significantly increase your contributions. Now you already contribute 7,000 in the second year and in the third year, 8,000 in the, and so on. So your, uh, your contributions actually gradually increase as you increase your income uh, by only 3% per year and your savings rate by only 1% per year. And by doing this, you see the growth becomes much faster and you would reach uh, 1 million, not after like um, 30, seven years as in the base strategy, but uh, after 25 years. Um, th so this is a not so lazy strategy. I, th I would say it's even, it's still a lazy strategy because you are just working with a safe government job and get some inflation compensation uh, and you save not so much. It's not a very aggressive savings rate, right? But, um, um, but you would still like um, uh, make a million, uh, becoming a millionaire in net assets. Uh, investment assets and you and we don't even assume you have very high return on investment you just like uh, your your investments you can see here it's just a seven percent return on investment so you would just just store your um, wealth in the s p 500 for instance okay so um, this is one str one strategy that would accelerate your uh, one million dollar um, goal like by 12 years or so. So now it's only 25 years. So if you start with 20, you, you could be a millionaire in, uh, at 45 using this not so lazy strategy if all the assumptions would actually turn out to be true. Okay, but let's accelerate things a bit, right? So let's go from this strategy to the save more strategy. So now we, we actually assume, so let's check the assumptions. We start with the medium in income again. And we assume the income grows by 3% as previously. And uh, we assume the grow income growth stops as we reach six figure income, which is even like um, a defensive assumption. And uh, you start invest 20% and then you do less, like grow your savings rate by 1%, which is uh, 
uh, based uh, com compared to your total income, which is less than your income growth, right? So you you could spend more two percent every single year, and so we start with investing twenty percent with a savings rate of twenty percent. So this would then how would this accelerate uh, the millionaire status? So you see, previously we, it took us twenty five years to reach the one million. Now it takes us twenty years. So we have shaved off five years of our of our goal of be uh, to become a millionaire um, uh, just by starting with a higher savings rate so a high savings rate is basically the holy grail of uh, wealth generation and uh, and this is based on the median income this is just based on the government income so you don't you don't do like any extra work you work only say 40 hours a, uh, a week you have a lot of free time uh, with your family with your friends you can use the weekends you, you don't need to care about your investments and stuff so it's like a automatic way to, to a million and um and like also an automatic way to to um yeah become financially independent in, twen in 20 years which i think it's it's quite a uh quite an attractive um strategy right you simply start with a higher savings rate um and it's very automatic very passive okay but now now let's 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 start with the hustling strategies because if you want to really accelerate things uh like faster than 20 years if you don't want to wait two decades to become a millionaire then usually it's the the best or maybe on, even only way not only i should not say only this is not true but the, one of the most common ways is to simply create a side business yeah so uh until now we have, we have assumed you get to just get the medium income and um uh and you do not do nothing else you are basically chilling out most of the time but now there are always trade-off right if you want to accelerate these 20 years now you might have to create a side business you might have to create an ai business like this one proposed by emily in in the blog article so by the way you can check out the blog article i will give it a link in the description below the great thing about building a side business is that the business itself becomes an asset so if you make say 10k a year or so with a side business you can you can um slam a multiple on it say a 4x multiple or so uh, on on the net income so the business would be worth 40k and if you make 100k like this would be the income level you would you could make as an employee if you if your business would make a 100k you can slam a 4x multiple on it and it would be worth 400k already so you could save 100k more every single year and the business itself would be worth 400k so you could sell it for 400k and put it into investments uh, afterwards so this is kind of one very common way to to accelerate wealth creation and you see we shaved up like seven more years compared to the previous strategy so now we use a side business strategy we, st we, we again start with zero we have an if you if you already have like a 100k nest egg or so you could shave up shave off more years even right but now we, we assume we s you start with zero yeah, you still have the median income of uh, 64,000 in the US, you have a savings rate of 20%, an aggressive savings rate. Your contributions initially would be 12K. Um, and initially you, you have no investment returns. We now assume an 8% investment return because you are maybe a bit more aggressive, right? What are, what are they, uh, an averaged annualized return on of investment rate of eight percent the inflation adjusted average of s p 500 plus one percent premium for small cap value stocks so we basically um, invest say a fifth or so of our um, income into small cap value etfs as well and um, this would be a bit more say active in terms of investment it's not really active because it's still investment right it's just a capital allocation decision you make um, so you, you you sprinkle in some small cap value that have historically outperformed s p 500 for instance you could also do like sprinkle in nasdaq or so which also has historically outperformed or tech investments or so just sprinkle in a small percentage of your portfolio into higher growth vehicles that also have more risk but have, have a higher annual annualized return historic return and um and eight percent is like not like 
going from seven to eight percent should be absolutely possible. So this is just a scenario, right? A realistic scenario, I think, with a side business strategy where you are a more enterprising um, investor. Now your business could make five thousand uh, bucks per month, right? And if you if you do this, your business valuation would be five x that, for instance, in this setting. So your net worth would be 60K in the, in the first year because now your net worth is basically the sum of the business valuation and your stock market assets. And now as you made more money, your business made 12K, you can also invest more, right? So you could, have I even, yeah, so you see a B2, so this is like, uh, you have the previous stock market assets, but then you add the contributions and you add the return on, on investment. And you should e you should even earn, okay, now this, <laughs> okay, I missed this. Nobody pointed it out. Nobody, nobody caught this. Now I caught it myself, which, which is good. Can I edit this? Plus. I should be able to edit this. Maybe I need to go to this account. Maybe Emily didn't give me access to this. So this was a side business strategy. And now basically our stock market assets file make a copy okay so let's just make a make a copy out of it so this is probably the simplest way of doing it okay so now as now because we we can also so we our business makes 12k so we could invest those 12k as well right so basically it would accelerate our income generation even more because we can now add the business earnings on top of it as well so um So in the first year, actually our stock market assets would be much higher. So, okay, okay, now this is, this is basically it. Okay, so you see, uh, after 13 years, we would become a millionaire. So our stock assets would actually, and we have not even sold the business, right? This is just that we invested our income and we invested our uh, business earnings. And we assume like a 20% growth rate of our business earnings from a relatively small base, right? Like a thousand thousand per per month so this could be done working a saturday or so uh, on say as an ai prompt engineer on upwork or so we can make a thousand bucks um with four saturdays which means you would have to work um, maybe even working two or three days a week in addition to that so you would not only work 40 hours for your main job but you would also maybe add another 10 hours or so on 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 as on a, as a freelance basis or even better you would create an ai business or so that could really where you can, can really scale up your income oftentimes even faster than 20 percent per year um especially in the beginning with the small numbers like 12k per year or so um you could accelerate it much more quickly so this assumes like you would double your income in five in four years but many people have like uh, like to, uh, assuming a business income in five years if you have a side business you work on it every day or so even even only one hour it is very unlikely in my opinion that you would only go to 24k but okay there's also the risk of uh, of failure right so we need to average these things out um but this is definitely a scenario i mean whether it's realistic or not many people have done it many people have done it much much quicker uh, I have done it much, much, much quicker than building like a side business in five years. It only makes 24K uh, on annual basis. Uh, um, like this would, would be very simple compared to what I have done, compared to what Emily has, has done, compared to what ev many, many business owners have done. So of course there is a survivor, survivorship bias at play, but it is definitely possible. Okay, so let's move on to the next strategy, a frugal investor strategy. Now, Let's get rid of this idea of creating a side business for now. Let's just assume we are um, a frugal investor. We basically save 50% of our paycheck. Maybe we don't have a family yet. So uh, we, we simply um, invest. We put all our 
our focus on investment. Maybe we spend a weekend researching different uh, different investment strategies. Maybe we put some things into Bitcoin or so. Maybe you, we use real estate leverage. Maybe we put put pick stocks that make like a 15% yield. Maybe Tesla. So I would say I would expect Tesla or even Nvidia make a 15% average yield in the next 10 years or so. So uh, if we w if we would just assume we start with zero network, but we save 50% of our income, our contributions would be 31k, and um, and by basically the net worth would accelerate much much quicker, right? Because now the return on investment you see is 15% on our invested capital, which quickly after only five years would would get into the range of our main income. So our return on investments from the from the business uh, from the from the capital would be higher than what we contribute through our jobs. And um, if we would use this strategy, we could we could become a millionaire in 13 years, just working our main job and and becoming slightly more aggressive as investors. We could also reach a 13 percent um, yield with just leverage, right? It's just um, or 15 percent yield with just leverage, right? The S&P 500 has like a historic, say, 9 percent yield or so. If we would just use a um, 2x leverage, so to say, right? We always like we could get a loan or so as, as a government employee, we can get loans. Uh, we could put the loans back into the uh, into capital. It would be risky, right? There's no like it's all trade offs, but these are all strategies that have been done. And um, yeah, that's there are many ways of accomplishing this uh, at a higher risk. And it is not generally recommended that you would do this, but it is possible to maybe to maybe get get loans to maybe get loans to build real estate. Most real estate are uh, built with uh, with um, um, external capital. So you would get capital from banks and you would get a return on investment on capital of banks and you would get pocket the difference. So this would be the frugal investor strategy. You have a high savings rate and a, high, and a relatively high return on investment that would be possible by um, learning a bit more, spending more time with investment, maybe being more interested, doing a more active strategy than just just putting your money into the S&P 500 without leverage, without um, thinking about investments. But of course, it's also more risky. You could underperform the S&P 500 with your real estate investment strategy or crypto or anything kind of strategy. You could underperform it. And uh, and yeah, but as your savings rate is 50 percent, the risk is also kind of the risk is only that you would not get as fast to a million as you hoped for uh, because you always underspend your income. You don't have any like um, existen existential risk as long as you don't take uh, take on too much debt. And um, OK, so this is uh, this is an interesting strategy uh, based on 15 percent capital appreciation. You would reach the millionaire st status in 13 years. We don't assume a growth of income, so you would basically don't focus too much on your job, right? <laughs> so your job would be just a means to an end and you would focus on in savings, savings, savings and investment, investment, investment. Then there's another strategy, a uh, um, high return on investment strategy. So this is if you get, could get a 20% or so return on investment during the next 13 years. I have some ideas. I won't share them now in this video. I have already shared them on the Finkster channel. So if you're interested, check out the Finkster channel. Um, uh, here, your net worth would start with zero again. You have a, um, you you would be, you could start as a say coder, developer, AI engineer, or so. You start with a high income of 100 percent, 100k, and a relatively modest savings rate, right? Because you could you would still spend more than the median household here in this. Uh, situation and uh, and your contribution would be 25k in the first year but then as you grow your income even um, you would you would uh, grow your contributions as well your return on investment would be a 20 percent as I said so in this case you could really quickly accelerate to a million in, a, in say 10 years or so you would reach millionaire status okay so these are some some uh, more traditional strategies to becoming a millionaire. Uh, there are many, many other strategies, but I think these kind of um, strategies show that whatever strategy you use, you should put, you should use a decade, right? Of uh, you should choose a strategy 
be intelligent about the strategy, create a spreadsheet and stick to, to the strategy for a decade or so. And uh, you, could, you could go from zero to a million in, uh, in 10 years using those kind of strategies. There are many ways of doing it. Um, and the best way is always to underspend, uh, underspend, under, underspend your income as uh, Charlie Munger says, so you invest more in capital asset um, every single year. And then of course, choosing the right capital assets is also important. Uh, if you don't want to choose, just you would just invest in an index fund most likely. If you, uh, but there, so I would say some, some great ways to, to maybe enrich this uh, return on investment with some, uh, some selection of, assets that would appreciate faster in an AI post AI world. Um, for instance, I would say like Tesla humanoid robots is a great uh, investment opportunity that I'm personally participating in. And, um, and you can see many of the valuation models I have on the things to channel, they point to a uh, more than 20% return on investment over the next decade or so. And um, uh, there are other opportunities. There are even higher return on investment opportunities. There are ways to, to accelerate the journey by using debt or leverage. For instance, real estate investors do this a lot. So they have like the real estate itself might only appreciate by four or 5%, but as they are leveraged uh, up, they have like a five X leverage on their own capital. Also, if they have a 20% um, equity to loan ratio, and uh, or equity to asset value ratio, then they would leverage up 5%, uh, 5x, right? So uh, they have some cost for the capital, but they but through the red leverage, they could actually get a 10%, 15%, sometimes 20% return on their equity on their own capital. And in this case, the, the um, capital appreciation would accelerate, and it's often possible to reach it in 10 years, but it but but one would would one can only reach it if if one would stick to the plan right for a long period of time uh, and uh, not deviate from the plan and um, it it is work but it's also work not to invest it's also it's much more stressful not to have capital not to not to invest not to participate on the right side of change so um, as this was a very popular post. Um, by Emily on the Finkster blog. Uh, I thought, okay, let's make a video out of it. I hope you got some value. Uh, if you like this video and you want to see more similar videos and give me a like and subscribe to the Finkster channel so you don't miss any videos. Uh, I appreciate having you here. I appreciate your time. Thanks for being an active uh, um, Finkster uh, member and uh, let's be on the right side of change. Bye.